Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we're going to get into another pattern where we could be seeing more nor'easters once again, just like we were in, I think, a couple weeks ago now. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. We're going to be starting at the top layer because this is the easiest layer to understand. It's usually not all over the place. You can usually see what's going on. So we're looking at our 250 millibar wind speed streamlines, which basically is going to allow us to see our jet streams way up in the sky. And it's going to make it easy to understand where our moisture is coming from, where the cold air is coming from. So I have three of these frames to show you guys. And you might learn something from this. I've never shown anything like this. And this is kind of what goes into... Uh, my forecasting and just seeing what the pattern looks like long range. But looking at this, I see with my eyes without these without these arrows, I can see this, but I put the arrows there so that somebody that doesn't really have an eye for it might be able to pick up on what I'm talking about easier. The black line is going to indicate where our moisture is coming from. And then the blue line is going to indicate our northern jet stream, which is basically where the cold air is at. So you can see how they interact. Now, this is only 60 hours out. This is Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, so October 23rd, Wednesday. And you can see the northern jet is kind of in the central United States, and north of there, it's going to be very, very chilly. Okay, so Chicago, areas like that, very, just to the north of it, are going to be more chilly than the areas to the south of it. You can see that it is dipping down in the Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas area, and then kind of comes up, and then up near the east coast, these two arrows interact here and the southern jet is you can see comes from Louisiana and the Gulf and pushes its way all the way up and that's where our moisture is going to come from that helps transport the Gulf moisture all those thunderstorms you know how stormy it is down there and how much precipitation is down there in the Gulf and it brings it all the way up north up the east coast and we see this a lot of times all fall time long and all winter time long as well and in very stormy seasons and very stormy winters for the east coast we see a lot of this going on and then you can see the two jet streams meet and this is where in the winter time it can create snowstorms this time of year not quite as much it would take a lot more but these two because again north of it is where the cold is north of the blue one and if these interact and become one well to the north of both of those it's going to be very moist and very cold which would create some snowy situations now, let's look at our second frame, and this is a little bit more of an extreme one. You can see there's a big dip in that northern jet, that blue one, and then they really uh, meet there in the northeast and, you know, probably going to bring snow to Canada with this one. But, again, you can see from Louisiana, coastal Texas, Mexico, and the Gulf of Mexico, we have that black line starting out there and then working its way up the east coast and then into the northeast and these are what develops really strong nor'easters because they ride up with this moisture and then they really start to get a spin to them once they get over the east coast of the united states and then they ride up the coast this is just classic classic nor'easter setups this one is uh this is october 26th saturday morning and you can see we have another very favorable pattern look for nor'easters and a third one this one looks like it doesn't connect quite as good as the rest uh, you can see the black line stays pretty well offshore. I would say the southeast would get a lot of rain with this setup, but it doesn't really connect there. So the northeast doesn't really get quite as much of that precipitation or a nor'easter with this look. But it's so far out. This one's Thursday, October 31st, Halloween, that I would say there's a good chance that this could connect or might not even happen at all. But I'm just trying to educate you guys on what a good nor'easter pattern would look like. The other two are much shorter range and much more likely than this one. Now let's look at our storms here. So let's look at our precipitation type. We're not really going to be seeing a lot of blue on this, but we are going to be looking at our precipitation type. Very low resolution simulated radar, basically. And you can see the beginning of the development of a nor'easter here down there off the coast of Texas. And also you can see our subtropical storm slash nor'easter. They become a lot like nor'easters usually this time of year once they reach this location. And you can see that one's just offshore of the mid-Atlantic and just to the south of New England's coasts. Uh, and that one's really going to move offshore, not really interact too much with the New England coastline for the most part, but we do see our new nor'easter developing there off the coast of Texas. A lot of people don't know this, but that's where nor'easters tend to really start to pick up in intensity. 
And you can see by Tuesday, a lot of that moisture is transferred over to the Carolinas and Virginia. And sometimes, again, they're onshore down there. Sometimes they're, you know, they track over Florida and really stay off the East Coast, even down as far south as the coast of Georgia. And they ride up the coast and they're over the ocean. But sometimes they track over the southeast and really are over land for a lot of the time. So by Tuesday, October 22nd, you can see we're dealing with uh, rain for North Carolina, Virginia, as our low pressure system is located about right over there. And this one stays on shore, as you can see, in New England. It's just offshore or right on the coastline of Maine by Wednesday, October 23rd, bringing a lot of heavy precipitation to Maine. Cold air isn't really in place, so we're not worried about snow with this one for the most part, but there will be a lot of rain, and we'll have to look into how much wind there could be. I might make a video specifically for this one uh, as we get a little bit closer. Now let's look at Friday, October 25th, and again, look down at coastal Texas. We have our next one starting up right there in the Gulf of Mexico. And a lot of times we see them start to develop in Kansas and Oklahoma and then dip down into the Gulf or transfer into the Gulf. Right now, we're seeing them really start up in the Gulf and then just ride that southern jet stream that I showed you in the beginning of the video and take that track, a very similar track, to what that was showing. And I didn't show all the nor'easters on there. I just showed a few of the more favorable-looking patterns. And you can see this one looks quite intense. Lots of moisture along the southeast and southeast coast here by... Very, very early morning Saturday, October 26th. And then you can see by Sunday, October 27th, you can see it's well offshore of New England. So I think this was that setup that I said didn't connect very well. I think this one lines up with that. Uh, or no, 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 sorry. I think that one was, yeah, that one was Halloween. So this is a different one, but it doesn't look to connect very well on this one either. It does have a lot of cold air in place, but it just stays well too offshore. But again, these things can trend west, can trend east. These, you know, when it's 138 hours out, these can come very, very far east or very, very far west to the point where this one could be riding the coast. And some of the other ones that look like they could ride the coast might even be out the sea. So a lot of those things can change. But what we're really confident in is that the setup looks very, very favorable for nor'easters to be developing, whether they're out in the ocean or on the east coast of the United States. And that's the important thing because that's where we're starting to talk about, well, there is a chance of it happening. And that's the important part. Now by the 28th, this one starts developing a little bit further east than the rest of the ones we've seen. You can see it's kind of just south of the panhandle of Florida developing here. We also have some moisture there off the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina. Let's move on to Wednesday, October 30th, and you can see a lot of moisture there along the southeast coast and mid-Atlantic coast there as well as the southeast coast, but we do have a lot of energy going on inland over the Great Lakes there. We can see it's showing a snowstorm. This is 222 hours out, so I'm not really going to say it looks likely that there's going to be a snowstorm, but right now it's showing a very, very big trough trying to pour in. You can see those blue lines indicating more and more uh, areas of lo uh, lower heights, which indicates colder temperatures in the more middle of those blue rings uh, up there near the Dakotas and Minnesota. But we do have enough cold air over the Great Lakes to develop some snow at this point. Now by Thursday, you can see tons of moisture. This is Halloween morning. This is the one that doesn't connect very well. You can see tons of moisture along the mid-Atlantic coast and southeast coast and northeast coast. It gets a little low resolution and a little wonky as we get far out, obviously. So this is 234 hours out, almost 10 days. So a little bit of wonky stuff going on. And you can see it doesn't really connect and it goes well offshore. And by November 1st, the morning of Friday, November 1st, uh, there's nothing even along the coast. So it moves offshore very, very quickly. Now, I like this frame and the reason I chose to show this one is you can see that after the cold moves in on November 1st, according to this model, again, really far out, not really forecasting this to happen precisely this way. But it is interesting to note that you can see those little blue areas coming off of the Great Lakes. That's lake effect snow that this model's indicating, and that's very early lake effect snow at that. So be on the lookout if you live along the lakes. We could get to a very, very early start with the lake effect snow very interesting stuff going on. Here's another frame. You can see November 2nd, uh, by the evening of November 2nd, we still have those lake effect bands going strong. So just very crazy stuff. Also notice we have another nor'easter offshore of Texas developing on the 2nd of November on this model. And then by November 6th, we have another one developing there offshore of Florida. So let's look at our total precipitation for the entire model run as we have all of these systems moving up the coast. 
Uh, clearly, we have tons of precipitation along the eastern United States. The southwest staying really dry. But, I mean, along the coasts of Flor- or, yeah, Florida, all of the Gulf states, and then the southeast particularly getting two inches plus during this entire model run. And then the northeast even getting more than an inch of rain as well, as, as well as New England and everywhere in the northeast. So there's going to be tons of precipitation going on for this later third of October and maybe even the beginning of November. So very, very interesting and exciting pattern coming up. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Share this video to your Facebook with your friends and family if you think they will find it useful or private message it to them. It's up to you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.